So I, I want to talk to you about the research behind finding a cure to Alzheimer's, more specifically how um, research is really headed in different directions today, right? We have the beta amyloid um, scientists who are trying to tackle the um, amyloid plaque, um, the tau tangles, and even the inflammation. Mm -hmm. Where should research go? I mean, do we need to tackle it all at once? And is there, is there one area that's getting ahead of, of the others? We do need to tackle all three pillars of the pathology, plaques, tangles, and inflammation at once. But then how we apply that, those therapies, and when is what matters most. And yes, as you might expect, the amyloid therapies are, are further ahead because we've known about the amyloid gene that I and others found 30 years ago, longer than we've known about the genes that control the inf inflammation. And um, you know, tangles are also catching up. So the, the way it works is that uh, in terms of curing Alzheimer's, we have to think about those who have the pathology of Alzheimer's with no symptoms that are on their way to disease, just like you think about a cancer patient with no symptoms but they have a tumor beginning, or someone with high cholesterol and a little bit of plaque around the heart, and you'd want to stop them from getting a heart attack or congestive heart failure. In that regard, you have to hit the amyloid first. And I think the amyloid hypothesis has gotten a major validation from our Alzheimer's in a dish, because unlike in mice, where we couldn't get amyloid to cause the disease in terms of causing tangles, if you use human neurons in the right environment and grow a mini brain like we did, um, then sure enough, amyloid will cause the tangles. And I think that debate has been put to rest, that amyloid does trigger the rest of the disease. But when you hit amyloid, you have to hit it preferably 5, 10, or 15 years before symptoms when you start to see the amyloid accumulate in the brain, just like with heart disease, you don't wait till somebody has congestive heart failure and say, here, take a Lipitor or a statin for cholesterol. You do that beforehand. Well, with cancer, you don't wait till somebody has a two-inch tumor and say, oh, yeah, we're going to give you this drug that limits tumor size. You do that at the very beginning. That's the mindset change that's happening with Alzheimer's. Hit that amyloid early. Since the amyloid causes the tangles in our system and it looks like that's the case in the disease, hit the tangles early. But if you have someone with the disease right now and you want to uh, help them, uh, you need to hit mainly neuroinflammation, the brain's immune reaction to the plaques and tangles and ensuing nerve cell death. And luckily, you know, thanks to the Cure Alzheimer's Fund, Alzheimer's Genome Project that I direct, you know, several years ago we found the first gene that controls that inflammation called CD33. And now we're well into drug discovery around that gene as well. In fact, I would say after the original amyloid gene, that CD33 gene is probably the most targeted gene in the pharmaceutical industry right now for Alzheimer's. So where, for Cures Alzheimer's, what is your priority today? Um, where is it where you're focusing most of your efforts to bring us closer to a cure? Yeah, we're, we're a research-oriented research foundation. So. Our goal is to really be in the epicenter of basic and translational research from genes that cause Alzheimer's or protect against Alzheimer's to the model systems where those genes are implemented to cause the disease and a model system where we can test new therapies or understand how the disease works, all the way to development of a drug before it gets to clinical trials, which we're also doing. We have a drug that's about to go into clinical trials next year that where all the seed money came from cure Alzheimer's. Very promising drug for hitting the amyloid early on. So the priority for us mainly is, is research. At, the, at, the, at clinical trials, we'll try to facilitate that and help it out, but you know, the cost goes up exponentially, right? So to do the basic science work is one cost. To now get to preclinical drug development, that's 10 times more. To do your first trial, that's yet 10 times more or 100 times more. And then to go to final trials, that can be you know, 1,000 or 10,000 times more. We're not going to compete in that game. We're going to stay where our strength is, which is um, the basic knowledge for drug discovery and early drug discovery that pushes it to clinical trials. And then we hand it off um, at, that, at that point. And I think that's been very successful. In terms of our priorities, amyloid is a high priority. We have drugs already going into trials. Our second priority is, is to take advantage of what we discovered about the genes that control inflammation. And, and our drug discovery there is just going way better than I thought it would. So 
it's so important because if you have a patient with Alzheimer's right now, you have to stop the neuroinflammation in the brain. It's not enough to hit the amyloid. That's too late. So if we, if, if the drugs do work and prevent or reduce the inflammation, then is that as good as saying we, we have a cure? It, it's tough to say what a cure is. If stopping the inflammation <clears throat> in a patient with the disease stops the insult that's constantly attacking the brain, which is what I believe, then the hope is, and I believe this will be the case, but you know, it's debatable, is that the brain's regenerative properties will take over. Uh, as soon as there's no insult, the brain has an amazing ability to regenerate. I wrote about this in, in the book I wrote, Super Brain. It's all about the myths that your brain just keeps going downhill and it can't come back. I tell stories about people with strokes who have come back miraculously because of the brain's never-ending ability to surprise you with, with its regener regenerative uh, properties. So I believe, and I hope, that if we stop neuroinflammation with a cocktail that also you know, hits the amyloid plaques and perhaps the tangles, um, that the, you give a chance for the brain to come back. Just like those old TV commercials, you know, as soon as you stop smoking, your lungs start to come back. The brain would be 100 times that in terms of its predicted regenerative properties. So that makes me optimistic. But the proof will be in the pudding. So what is your projection then? How, how far away do you feel like we are? I think we'll have drugs that hit the amyloid soon. What soon? Uh, within within years, like a few years, but the question will be, will the FDA allow them to be used to stop Alzheimer's disease before symptoms? And right now, we don't know because the FDA right now is still of the mindset that you have to hit amyloid plaques and show the patient gets better cognitively. Well, that's not the purpose of hitting amyloid plaques. You hit amyloid plaques before they have the disease so they don't get to the disease. But the FDA wants you to hit plaques and say they get cognitively better. It may not be possible to do that. It's like saying, we're only going to approve your cancer drug if you give this drug to a cancer patient with a two-inch tumor. He already has a two-inch tumor and the organ is failing and you make that patient live longer and bring the organ back. Well, no, you had to hit that tumor when it was just a few cells starting to divide abnormally. It's like saying, you know, show me that Lipitor will um, uh, help somebody with congestive heart failure who already had a heart attack. So, this, so the FDA needs to be educated by the scientists who now more or less believe universally hit amyloid early before symptoms. If you make us do trials to show prevention, five or 10 year trials to show, okay, let's just wait to see if we stop the amyloid, 10 years later they don't get the disease, you'll never have a drug. Mm. If you try to treat patients with this disease with amyloid drugs and hope that they cognitively get better, um, maybe if you start with very mild patients, which is what they're doing in trials, you still might miss. And then you're going to get the backlash. Oh, the amyloid hypothesis doesn't work. You need a, a whole paradigm mindset change. Hit amyloid early. FDA, please trust thousands of scientists who say this is what we need to do. You know, for cancer drugs now, we don't say, oh, you have to show a patient lives longer. You just have, you just have to show the drug stops tumor growth. HIV, hit the virus. You don't have to show, you don't have to wait to see if somebody gets Kaposi sarcoma. With heart disease, same thing. Do the same for us. Lower the bar for Alzheimer's, give us a chance. We now have enough genetic clinical data and the Alzheimer's in a dish. The Cure Alzheimer's Fund did, has provided the absolute validation. Hitting amyloid early stops this disease. That Actually, the last question, um, that's what I, I, I wanted to follow up from that because I know that one of the things you did was create the Alzheimer's brain in a dish. What has that meant for, for research exactly? Like, What has that led to? Well, it means that we can study the disease process for the first time in a model where plaques actually lead to tangles. In mice, that doesn't happen because in the mouse, the, the proteins that make the tangles the tau proteins a little different. And when you, put the am when you have amyloid made in the mouse brain, yeah, eventually there'll be enough inflammation later on that they become cognitively impaired. But it's not real Alzheimer's because the amyloid isn't leading to tangles. And that led to a lot of debate. Does amyloid really cause the disease? Well, when you use human neurons made from stem cells in a gel-like matrix that mimics the brain, where those nerve cells can create networks just like they do in the brain, yes, you get plaques first, Plaques cause the tangles. Stop the plaques, you stop the tangles. So now we are testing drugs 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper. 
to say which drugs stop the amyloid and thus stop the tangles, which ones in some cases stop the tangles even though they're still amyloid. In other words, you interfere with how amyloid causes the tangles. And we have several dozen candidate drugs now beyond the one we have going into trials that either hit amyloid and thus tangles or hit tangles even though they're still amyloid. That wasn't possible before. And now we're bringing the inflammatory component into the 3D Alzheimer's in a dish as well. And we already have about 12 drugs that are hitting the inflammation in the midst of amyloid plaques and tangles. So it's changed everything. It's, been, it's just made everything 10 times faster, 10 times easier, 10 times cheaper. Great. Great. Thank you so much. I could You're go welcome. on forever, but I'm, I know I have to stop right now. But it is, it, it is fascinating um, to think that you have created this brain in a dish, so to speak, right? That, oh, and, no, very little. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but I mean, that's, that's fascinating to know that you can actually start testing the, you know, medications or yeah. against what is in that dish. I mean, when we say brain in a dish, it doesn't have all the regional structure. Right. I it's mean, just this, this the... is just, a, just a, a clump of, of, of the appropriate nerve cells making connections yeah. in the network. And, um, and then we can throw in what are called the glial cells yeah. and, and mix those in. Yeah. And so we, we can see the interactions between these cells living in a gel that mimics the milieu of the brain. Uh, it doesn't, of course, have the complexity in, yeah. by, by even one one millionth of the brain, but it's enough to say we can get plaques, we can make tangles, we can get neuroinflammation, and now we can quickly test drugs to stop that. And that's working really well. That's great.